Hi Cancer! Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for September 2019. This month you're going to see a lot of activity in Virgo which means your third house of communication Cancer and that will be followed by a shift into your fourth house of home and family as many of these planets move into Libra. Now I think that Julia has something to say about Mercury's activity this month. What do you got for us Julia? All right. Hey, Cancer and Cancer Rising. So Mercury, which is the planet of communication, is really, really supercharged for you this month. Um, not only are we going to have a greater epiphany day, which means that Mercury is moving fast and it's conjoining the sun, um, but it's going to have that in Virgo, which is a sign Mercury loves to be in, and in your third house, which is the house that Mercury is the most happiest in. So this is going to be a really good time to improve communications. That greater epiphany day is happening on the second um, and it's a good time for learning something new which can be a lot of what the third house is about and a great time for any sort of strategizing that you might need to do for your life um, while Mercury is in your third house, you might be also a little extra busy, especially with like lots of little trips around the neighborhood, which is all ruled by the third house. And it can also be a really good time for signing contracts too. You know how Mercury retrograde, which is a totally different period because Mercury is slowing down and going backwards, how that can be a bad time for just signing those contracts? Well, now this is a good time to sort of think ahead if there's anything of that nature that you need to do in your life. Um, now, there's only one thing that you should be a little bit cautious of with having this supercharged Mercury in your third, and that's maybe being a little bit of a know-it-all, um, because that's Virgo's lower manifestation. So don't get a little too big for your britches, especially um, along your communications and learning with other people. Um, and then Mercury is going to move into your fourth house after the 14th. Um, the fourth house is a totally different feel. It relates to family and home. And when Mercury is in there, our communication Communications might become a little bit more private and we might feel like uh, socializing uh, because Mercury is a very social planet um, and maybe going over ideas with our family members a little bit more. Natha, what do you have to say about Venus and Mars this month? Yeah, hi Cancer. So let's talk about Venus and Mars. So Venus will be starting the month also in the sign of Virgo and then later on September 14th we'll move into the, into the sign of Libra. So that means that Virgo is going to be starting the month in your third house. Um, third house is about communication, it's about connecting. And so with Venus, you know, we tend to, to look at Venus through the lens of love. So this is a good time, this first part of the month, to really communicate well with the people that you love. It's also would be a good time to do self-improvement. Mm. Um, the thing to watch out for though is to get nitpicky, especially with yourself. So um, you know, do some improving if it needs to happen, but don't be mean to yourself in the process. <clears throat> and then later in the month, Venus is going to move into Libra, and Venus loves to be in Libra because <clears throat> Libra, uh, Venus rules Libra. So you may feel particularly charming, and this will be happening in your fourth house. So, um, you know, use some of your, some of this eye for beauty that's going to show up and apply it to your home. It's a good time to make things pretty if you have mm. any more spots. And we're talking about Mars, <clears throat> excuse me, Mars is also starting, actually Mars will be in the sign of Virgo all month and it will be in your third house. Julia talked about an epiphany day and we have <clears throat> another epiphany day called heroic epiphany day. And this is when the sun and Mars are conjunct in the sign of Virgo. This is a really good day for starting projects, especially ones that require mental agility, would also be a good day to get some physical activity in, but <clears throat> make sure to be a good sport. <laughs> and know that Mars can be a little bit critical in Virgo, but Mars can also be really analytical and diligent, and those things come in really handy when it comes to, to communication. And since Mars is going to be in your third house all month, you'll be communicating with that Mars in Virgo flavor. Amy, I know you have some moon stuff for us, too, and some other stuff, too, I think. Yes, there's uh, going to be a harvest moon, which is the full moon that happens during the sign of Virgo. I'm going to make it a little quieter around here right now. <laughs> Juno, Juno the dog has yeah. joined us. Juno Aww. the dog. I, I put her right into this horoscope, but I uh, can't guarantee that. Um, so there's this harvest moon happening on the 13th. And a full moon, of course, uh, a harvest moon is a full moon. 
And that's going to be where we see the sun and the moon opposite each other in the sky. And the moon is hanging out with Neptune up in your ninth house of growth and expansion and travel. And the sun is hanging out with Mars down here in your third house of communication, which Natha and Julia have already said so much about. So um, expect there to be a, a kind of a duality there, a bit of a stretch pulling you in these two different directions where this uh, Mars and Sun make you want to, you know, stay focused on the details and organizing things and um, paying attention to correctness and, uh, and perfection. Whereas that Moon and Neptune just want to pull you out into the adventure of, of the imagination and of dreams and things that feel more expansive than that. So I think that this harvest moon is really kind of like an oasis in the middle of a September that's going to be really busy and very focused on little details. So right around the 13th, say the 12th, 13th, and 14th is a really great time to just take a load off, go into your imagination, you know, go out to a matinee during the day and, um, and relax and expand a little bit. <clears throat> There is um, uh, another thing that's happening is that Saturn is going to be moving, um, uh, changing its direction. It's been traveling retrograde, and on the 18th, it is going to turn direct. And uh, that's really good news for you in the realm of relationships, because when Saturn is retrograde, as it has been for several months, there's this, um, there's this feeling of, of being blocked and the, there's this terrific pressure and the feeling really that you're being judged in your relationships and that there's something that you should be doing and it might not be apparent what it is. So when Saturn turns direct, there's probably going to be some clarity about, uh, about the direction that you should take in your relationships and what you can take responsibility for that will help things move forward there. So um, that's a pretty nice thing happening around the 18th. And then there is um, a final pass of Jupiter square Neptune happening on the 21st. And Jupiter and Neptune have been traveling in a square for much of the year. And they have been occupying, they've been uh, making multiple passes in square to each other over the degrees from 14 degrees to uh, 18 degrees. So if you have anything in mutable signs, in Gemini or Pisces or Sagittarius or Virgo between 14 and 18 degrees you've really been feeling this transit and it has a way of uh, bringing a sense of expansion but sometimes too much expansion there's really um, there's nobody holding the reins in this particular transit and um, and so you really have to watch out for uh, participating in um, sort of uh, mass delusions or situations where whole groups of people are, are kind of, you know, naively following uh, somebody who's proceeding in a very wrong-headed direction. So uh, I think after this transit is over, a whole lot of people may be shaken from a trance that they've been in for much of the year. Um, and then the last thing I want to let you know about is the new moon that's happening in Libra on September 28th. So let's um, put that up here on the wheel. And that is happening in Libra, which falls in your fourth house. And um, um, Natha talked about Venus moving through the fourth house and how good that's going to feel at home and how much you know love and warmth there can be about that. And I think that this new moon is going to really plant some seeds and some new beginnings uh, at home for you in, uh, in your relationships there and your partnerships there and just the quality of, uh, of peace and, uh, and tranquility. And it could even be actually about design because Libra loves design. So it could be about, you know, maybe time to um, do some redecorating to uh, get those drapes that you've been wanting to get. Or uh, finally, you know, make that trip to IKEA. So um, something to uh, something to enjoy. And I think that's all we've got for you. Very nice um, talking with you, Cancer, about your horoscope for September. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll put out another horoscope next month, and you can always find that in a playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology on YouTube. And we'll see you around the cosmos.
Bye-bye. Bye-bye.